Happy Sunday, everyone. It's gotten a little chilly here in York, which is why I'm bundled up for once today. This jumper is so cozy. I'm living for it. I miss summer, but I love autumn. Today's video is going to be all about curation. I'm going to talk about the mistakes people make, the misconceptions people have, the questions I've been asked about curation. I'm going to dive really deep and answer all of them. Before I get into all that, I really want to quickly explain what curation is, why it's important, and how you can achieve it. Basically, when you write a story on Medium and you publish it, curators will read it, uh, Medium curators, and if they like it, they will say, yeah, this story is great, I'm going to distribute it in a couple of topics or one topic. And what that means is that people who follow the topic, for example, food, psychology, um, relationships, even if they don't follow you, even if they've never heard of you before, they're going to follow that topic and they're going to be shown your story that the curators have distributed it in. So to get a story curated by medium curators, you need to have it tick off a couple of boxes. Like um, it can't be an advertisement. Um, it's got to be engaging. It's got to be like a good story. There's a bit of sort of mysticism around it because medium keeps such a tight lid on what makes a a curated story but I've done some investigating I've done some asking I've emailed medium staff a ton and I've got some answers for you so let's dive in okay so the very first thing I want to talk about is the timing of curation somebody emailed me actually and said um, hey so how long does it take for a medium story to be curated and if it doesn't get curated right away does that mean like there's no hope is it the longer I have to wait uh, the less chance it is for curation. Okay, stop all of that, because what I'm about to tell you will change your life. Not really, but it'll change the curation part of your life anyway. So, this is such a common one. Like, I remember this myself when I was first starting out on Medium. I'd refresh the page constantly, and like, I'd keep a timer. Like, okay, is it two hours? Is it one hour? Is it three hours? When exactly do those mystical Medium creators get to my story and read it and decide to distribute it? Um... So I found, personally, it's about two hours. Uh, sometimes it's longer, but I haven't found that the length of time for curation matters at all when it comes to whether or not they're going to curate it. One thing I have found is that even if it isn't curated at first, um, sometimes the creators go back a couple of days or even a couple of months and will, like, kind of post humorously... What's the right word? You know what I mean. They'll they'll curate it after the fact that they've uncurated it. So, for example, I published a story on, I think, the 25th of August. Uh, it wasn't curated, which broke my heart because <laughs> my, my validate, my self-worth is really tied up in medium curation validation. But anyway, so I was like, okay, whatever, moving on. Three days later, I got a notification saying that they distributed it in two topics. And I was like, all right, bam. Amazing, that's great. Uh, so I was thrilled, obviously. Now, I didn't do anything about that. I just waited and they happened to do that. But I dug into this to figure out how you can make that happen and there's two different ways. First of all, you can email medium support. This tends to be more successful if, like your stories, when you hover over the little reason that it didn't distribute it, it says um, your story was not reviewed due to high volume. That's good news. That means that you have a chance to change that because you can email them and be like, hey, um, so I noticed that my stories aren't being curated due to high volume. What can I do to change that? Here's a link to my latest story. Any feedback would be amazing. You want to be really polite, really grateful. Remember, these people are taking time out of their day to help you. Use that to write the email and then just be like, your friends at medium.com, what can I do to make this better? So the second strategy, you can buddy up. So I did this a couple of times. I had some mixed results, so ultimately I stopped doing it, but it worked for a couple of stories. Uh, one of them has gone on to be one of my highest earners, so you know, you can do that yourself. Have a friend email in a tip. So tips at medium.com is the email address you want to use. Just have them send in, hey, I read this story. I really loved it because X, Y, Z. I think other people would benefit from reading it because X, Y, Z. And um, here's the link. It would be awesome if you could curate it because I really liked it. The more honest this is, the more genuine this is, the more feeling there is in this email, the more likely medium curators are going to see it and be like, huh, that is a great story. I can't believe we missed that one. Boom, curated. Uh, so my results have been like 50-50 and ultimately I started getting curated so much that I it wasn't worth my while to do this anymore. But if you're struggling, this is something you can try. Have a friend, partner up, and just be like, let's try to help each other out. Okay, second, uh, a lot of people are like, what's the optimal strategy for tags? Like how can I use tags in a way that are going to get me curated? 
Let's back up. What are tags? When you write a story, when you're about to publish it, you have a little box and you have an option to add five tags to a story, which is going to help uh, your readers um, understand what the story is about. Uh, Medium has like, they generate tag pages so you can like click on politics, for example, and see all the, ta all the stories that are tagged in politics. Medium curators do not see these when they're deciding whether or not to distribute stories. So medium, medium curators are shown a completely naked story uh, with no tags or anything. They only see the story and then they use their own judgment, their own intuition to decide which topics, if any, it should go in. So topics, medium, what medium curators decide. Tags are what you decide. The two can overlap sometimes, but there's not a huge amount of overlap. Like, you can tag something in five tags and medium creators might distribute it in a completely different topic that you didn't tag them with. Um, so that being said, I have, I asked around a bit and I was like, so what do you, to my friends, what do you use tags for? Do you use tags at all? Like, are they pointless? Is it a waste of time? And I got this comment from uh, one of my friends, Yamna, and he wrote, I do go through the tag pages more than I go through the front pages of uh, Facebook threads. So for example, he really likes reading about psychology. Uh, so he goes onto the psychology tag and he gets to see all the latest stories that are tagged with psychology. He gets to see like the top psychology stories. Um, and he says that a lot of his friends do the same thing, medium readers. So ta tags are not obsolete. You can still use them. Uh, you know that it's worthwhile trying to tag your story accurately. So I, ha so how do medium curators decide what to tag or t how to distribute the story? What topics to distribute it in? I have a feeling they don't thoroughly read every single story because <laughs> they have thousands of stories distributed to them, like sent to them every single day. They don't have time. They're only like, I think 36 curators or something wild like that. So the best way to fat to get your story distributed quickly and in the right tags, or sorry, in the right topics is to have a very clear headline, first paragraph and last paragraph. Make sure this all makes sense. Make sure even if you cut out the whole middle chunk of your story, if somebody just read the title, first paragraph and last paragraph, they would still understand what your story is about. That is super important. And I think that it's going to help medium curators know what your story is about, what to distribute it in. This matters because sometimes, um, so sometimes like I write satirical things and they get distributed in the wrong tags, or sorry, I keep doing this, the wrong topics. And I'm like, medium curators, they obviously didn't really read my story. They obviously thought this was genuinely about work when actually it was about, you know, it's satire. It's not about work at all. Um, but that's my fault for not being clear enough in the story to give them that impression. Don't make my mistakes. Be ultra clear, be really concise, summarize what the story is about in your title, first paragraph, last paragraph. Um, that's how you can make sure that your medium curators are going to be distributing the, the story quickly and in the right topics. Okay, third thing, myth I'm talking about today, engagement helps with curation. It does not help with curation. You know how I was talking about earlier, uh, medium curators don't see the tags. They don't see anything. They only, they literally see a naked story, just words on a page. They don't see how many claps it has. They don't see how many people have viewed it, read it, nothing. They only see the story. This is a good thing. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh, the more you engage with a story, the more likely it is that it's gonna be curated. Um, and they'll be like, oh, well, it's a shame that that's not true. It's not a shame because it means that no matter how few, no matter how many followers you have, no matter how big your audience is on social media, you have exactly the same chance as me, as Chris Gage, as anyone for getting your story distributed. Um, that's great. It really evens out the playing field and it means that no matter what, you're going to have a fair shot at curation. So I've had stories that, you know, got like, I think one of my wildest ones got like 100 fans within the first day wasn't curated. People just loved it and it wasn't curated. That really broke my heart but then I was like well I guess engagement doesn't necessarily lead to curation. And then I've had stories that had zero views or actually like one view, the curator, um, zero fans and it got curated despite having no engagement and I was like okay it's so great that they saw the potential in that even when my own followers didn't see the potential. I still love you followers. Um, so that's just my own personal experience that kind of pants with that, that they, they don't see the engagement when they see a story. So engagement still helps with payment. Payment is dependent on engagement, but that's about it. Um, 
So what should you do instead of worrying about engagement? Uh, well, once you've published your story, there's not really much you can do other than wait. I would just, again, go over your title, go over your first paragraph, your last paragraph. That's going to be what the curators are focusing on. That's what you need to water, make watertight and completely idiot-proof about what your story is about. Make sure it has no typos. Make sure it really flows well. And that's, that's what you can do once your story is published. Don't worry about engagement. Just focus on writing the best stories you can. Right, on to number four. Uh, my favorite slash least favorite topic. The curation blacklist. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, uh, enough of the dramatics. A lot of people think that if you write anti-medium posts that you get put onto this curation blacklist, that the medium curators are like, oh, Danny's at it again. Let's punish him by not curating the next 50 of his stories. Okay, um, let's go over a couple of things. Medium does not have time to <laughs> cultivate these blacklists. They genuinely, to the best of my knowledge, curate stories based on story quality. They mess up sometimes, sure, they'll curate stuff that's bad or they won't curate stuff that's good, but for the most part they try to focus on quality and that's good, again, it means that they're not going to be uh, promoting clickbaity stuff, they're promoting good writing. That's going to let you shine. Um, I don't even know if they see the author's name. They might not get shown the author. It might be part of the stuff that gets wiped so that they, they're really, they don't have a bias when it comes to the story. They don't look at the author and be like, oh, I hate this person, or oh, I love this person. They might not get shown the author name. So what I think this is coming from uh, is the fact that Medium does not curate stories about Medium. And uh, some people think that that's like illegal or biased or whatever, but that's not true. Okay, so, they, the reason they don't do that is because they don't want to let people kind of like spam the system. They don't want to give rise to a new wave of like how to make it big on medium posts. So they don't incentivize people writing those. So they don't curate the good medium posts. They don't curate the bad medium posts. They just don't curate stories about medium. I also think that's so that they're, they're not seen to favor or promote content about medium that might or might not be true. Um, but you just, that's that's why your anti-medium stories isn't aren't being curated. It's because they just don't write anything, they don't curate anything about medium, um, whether it's positive or negative. So look, if you're worried about an anti-curation blacklist, there are a couple, like I mentioned a couple of strategies above or earlier in the video that you can try to do, email your friends, uh, at medium.com, have your own friends send in tips about your stories. But at the end of the day, remember that Medium, <laughs> they're not here to shit on you, to be frank. They're here to promote good stories. It might sound a little harsh. They don't care enough about us as individuals to try to like have favorites or, you know, unfavorites or people they hate. They just don't care enough. They're, they're literally all about the writing. That's a good thing, again, because it means that there's gonna be less nepotism. There's gonna be less favoritism. It's all gonna come down to the writing. And, you know, if you honestly care about writing, if you honestly think that you have a good style, that means that your writing, at the end of the day, is going to shine where people write in clickbait, people who are just trying to game a system, they're not going to do well in media. That's a good thing, again. So, yeah, I, I kind of lose my patience a bit when people are like, oh, medium's got an anti-curation blacklist. It doesn't. There is there's an anti-medium curation blacklist. Right, so, on to the next one. A lot of people think that once you kind of, like, crack the curation code, you're in for good. I used to be one of these people, so no shade. Curation is not an unstatic changing process. It is a live thing. It changes a lot. So I used to think that I had curation all figured out. I, you know, I had exactly 66.6 .6 or two thirds of my stories curated. Um, you know, I thought that that was just the upper cap. I spoke to a lot of other people. That was the cap that they experienced. That was just it. Two thirds of all of our stories could be created and that was the upper limit. So then Medium changed the game. Um, so they started curating more stories and it got to the point where today I would say like 95% of my stories are curated unless I write a story about Medium. My stories tend to be curated. Uh, so that's, that didn't used to be the case at all. And I was like, did I suddenly get better? But then I spoke to people and it turned out that everyone experienced this. Everyone, even people who were not hardly being curated at all, a lot of them were being curated now. Um, a lot of them were meeting those guidelines. My 
secret hypothesis. I have no confirmation for this. I think that I was writing 95% curation worthy stories all along. I think that in May or so, Medium kind of upped the upper limit of percentage of stories that were allowed to be curated. And that's why now I don't think that I, I suddenly in May got better along with everyone else. I think that's, they just kind of increased the number of stories that were allowed to be curated. Again, I can't confirm or deny. That's just my own tinfoil hat hypothesis. Um, so I, you know, when this happened, I was like, oh my god, I can quit my day job, I'm gonna be a full-time writer, all this curation means I'm gonna be paid so much more money, I'm gonna get so many more fans. It wasn't true. I got about the same number of fans. So basically, because everyone was being curated, even me, way more than normal, um, it was harder to get eyeballs on stories. So curation basically meant less, it had less heft, it had less clout. A curated story could go far but there was no guarantee curation didn't mean as much anymore it was like devalued i guess um so the biggest change i've noticed though is that even though curation is worth less initially it's worth more over time so an example of this is that back in like i think either last month or the month before a story i wrote in january january seven months ago was my highest earning story it had a sudden spike um it was, it just, I think it earned me 60 bucks last month, even though I published it months and months and months ago. But it doesn't just have to be a sudden spike. Like a lot of my older stories that were curated keep earning money over time. This is a royalty system. Medium continues to show and recommend curated stories to existing members, to new members, to new members of your audience. So a curated story means that Medium is gonna keep showing it to people over time. That story's gonna keep earning money. That's great. Uh, that's amazing. Uncurated stories, they kind of go, and they fade out. Curated stories are going to keep living, they're going to have a much longer lifespan. Uh, so I noticed this specifically in one story that got curated in fitness and has I think around a thousand views in the past month uh, and one that wasn't curated that has about a hundred views in the past month. The funny thing is on the first day they were published they both got 60 views so curation didn't push one magically far, it just didn't do much at all. Um, but it continued to recommend it over time, whereas for the uncurated story medium, it kind of just dropped it. So, on to the last and, in my opinion, most important misconception about medium, um, is that people think medium curation is going to make or break your story. One of the hardest things about Medium for me is that I offer up all my writing to these insatiable, unknowing Medium curation gods. I'm like, please say my story is worthy. Grant me curation. And when they do, I feel amazing. And when they don't, I'm like, well, objectively, that must mean my story sucks. That's not true. Medium curators are humans, just like you and I. They're not an algorithm. They make mistakes. They misread stuff, they miss over good stuff, they promote bad stuff sometimes, it happens. So the way I know this for a fact is that I routinely republish my stories. So when a story gets published and it's not curated, I'm like, F you curators, I'm gonna try again. So I copy the story, paste it into a new document, and I republish it. I just try again. Sometimes the exact same story, no changes, and I've had it happen before where a story that is republished that wasn't curated originally gets curated in like five topics or you know goes on to make ten times the amount of money. So medium curators make mistakes. Sometimes they don't curate something one time, they do the exact same story they curate it the next time. It just goes to show that it's a very subjective process. It's not objective. It's not a definitive sign of its worth or lack of worth just because the curators do or don't distribute it. Um, and so another example is that I wrote this story about being ghosted by my best friend and medium creators didn't distribute it and I was like, fine, whatever. But it really took off. Um, to date it has like 1500 views. It's made me a good chunk of money. And um, it's actually ranked really highly on Google's search results for like ghosting best friend. So even though it didn't do well on medium, it's doing really well bringing in traffic from outside medium sources. So sometimes medium creators don't predict that. They don't know what's going to do well, what's not going to do well. And I find even if I publish a story, it gets 10 views and it's uncurated. Um, I've had people email me and be like, this story really changed my life. 
curators might not have seen the value in that story. My audience did. And that means that curation is not going to make or break your story. It's not going to make or break your time on Medium. Your stories have value outside of what Medium curators decide. And it's up to you to decide how you define that. It's up to you to figure out where you're going to draw the line. It's definitely worth in terms of like money uh, to chase after curation, but in terms of your own mental sanity, maybe it's not worth obsessing over it so much. So it's up to you to draw that line and decide where you stand. Um, at the end of the day, the best way to improve your chances at curation is to read a lot, write a lot, and write from the heart. So that's going to be the end of my video on curation. If you've got any other curation questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I read all my comments. Um, I read all my emails that I get. And I love getting them. So just drop me a line if you've got any questions. All right, that's it for this Sunday. Have a wonderful week and I look forward to talking to you next Sunday.